my question concerns the idea of property values and its connection to um, school resources. And um, I want to ask the professor, like, how does that affect um, people in, in neighborhoods saying that, you know, if you live in a low-income neighborhood with um, low property values, that your school is um, funded according to that, whereas in high-income areas like, let's say, Naperville, uh, people have higher property taxes. So um, I guess my question is, how does that affect um, home ownership and how does that affect um, um, education in the community? Yes, school, public schools are funded in most states by property tax income, and it's at a district level. So the, all of the city of Chicago, it doesn't matter which neighborhood you're in, has the same per pupil funding, and we all have the same uh, property tax rate. But it is interesting that what happens, I've lost sight now of the gentleman who asked the question. There he is. That while it is true that um, higher income places have higher property taxes in dollar amounts, the vicious irony is that they have to tax themselves less, meaning at a lower rate of their, prop, their property values than places that have lower property values, right? Because if I have a lower property value, but it still costs a lot of money to educate a child, I have to have a higher tax rate. And what we have are, especially in the south suburbs, relatively small places with moderate property values, that they are taxing themselves because they value public education, taxing themselves at very high rates in order to maintain their public school systems and still struggling to do so, whereas places with much higher property values can tax themselves at very low rates because the values are so high. This is, of course, a primary mechanism of the maintenance of inequality. And because we think about housing as, look, if I can afford this big old expensive house out in Naperville, then I should be able to buy it. I should be able to hoard my resources out here in Naperville, and these schools are for my kids. Of course, we saw recently this year in Akron, Ohio, and I think in uh, Connecticut, where mothers were imprisoned for sending their children to, to schools outside of their district, trying to get their kids in a better school district, and then were imprisoned for supposedly stealing the tax dollars of some other school district. And so these are the kinds of things that illustrate that our way of funding public schools, which is basically every municipality can set up their own fiefdom, hoard their own resources, and decide these are for my kids, whatever happens to your kids, you should have worked harder, or you should have bought a better house, or whatever, that we hoard resources, and thus we have real, um, um, very large gaps in per pupil funding across school districts.